Welcome back. We're at lesson 3.3 today where we're going to talk about something called implicit differentiation. So all the derivatives you've done so far up to this point in the course have been what we call explicit equations. Okay, that's always when it's y equals to blah 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 blah. So here are some examples. y equals x squared, y equals x over x minus 1, y equals to the square root of 2x plus 1. These are all explicitly express y in terms of x. However, not always is this the case. And in this lesson, you're going to be working with what we call implicit equations, where the relationship between x and y is only implied, or when the x and y's are actually mixed together. So when I have something like this, x squared plus y squared equals to 1, you know this is the equation of the circle, but it's implied that y is a function of x. Okay. Similarly, xy plus y squared equals 3, that y variable here is a function of x. And same thing, xy equals to 1. And these are all examples of implicit equations. Now the question is, how do we take derivatives of these interesting equations? Well, we use this idea called implicit differentiation. Now, really, <laughs> remember how I said y is a function of x? So really think about it. Think about y as some crazy function. Okay, a complicated function. Think about what we did in lesson 3.1, like chain rule. Okay, so for instance, if I had something like this, I don't know, x squared plus, uh, and I'm going to call this like something complicated, 3x to the power of 4 uh, plus 5x squared plus 1 all to the power of 10. Well, really what I'm saying now is forget this blah, 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 and let me change it to y. So the question is, how would I take the derivative here? Well, the derivative x squared, of course, is just 2x. And if you think about y as this blah, blah, blah stuff, how did I take the derivative of this using chain rule from section 3.1? Well, I brought 10 down to the front. I called it blah, 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 blah to the power of 9. And then I had here the extra little bit, which was the derivative of the inside. So really, my inside function here is y. So there's my y. And then the derivative of the inside would be something like y prime. So in essence, it's just chain rule. So that's why the procedure here in number one is the most important. It's really differentiating both sides with respect to the variable x. So x is my independent variable. And then remember that y prime is that really extra little bit or that chain rule factor that comes out because y just represents some crazy function of x. Okay. And then to solve for y prime, you just need to collect all of them together. And then you have to do some algebraic manipulation like factoring and dividing to solve. So let me show you some examples, okay? Let's do some warm-ups first of all. y equals x, what's its derivative? Yeah, it's just 1. By the way, remember y prime? Sometimes people like to use dy dx, okay? Just be aware. Whoops. What did I just press? Okay, how about number 2? y prime equals 2. That's right, 2x. And then number 3, y prime equals 2. Yeah, chain rule, 2 2x minus 1 to the power of 1. And then don't forget the derivative of the inside, which is an extra factor of 2. So the 2 times 2 is 4, right? So we have here 4 times 2x minus 1. If you want to multiply it out even more, 8x minus 4. Okay, now how about this? y equals f of x all squared. So here is my composite function, my inside part my outside part. So the derivative outside, 2, right, to the power of 1, and then I have to evaluate it with the inside. And then don't forget my extra little bit. What's my extra little bit? It's the derivative of the inside, which is, you guessed it, just this notation f prime of x. So we can write this nicer if you want without uh, that many brackets, I guess, 2 f of x. Not really, I still need those brackets. <laughs> okay. And then finally, number five, the derivative of x is mm -hmm, one, because we're doing it with respect to x. And then now y is implicitly a function of x, kind of like what we had in number four. So the derivative of y squared is just two, that function, right, which we call y, and then the derivative of y is, that's right, your y prime. Okay, and that's how you differentiate implicitly. Okay? So, with that knowledge, let's go ahead and try these examples.
That was just the warm up, yeah. Here's the real examples. So given this equation, x squared minus 2y cubed plus 3x equals to 6, I'm asking you to find y prime, the derivative. So we'll do it implicitly. The derivative of x squared is just 2x, that's right. The derivative of negative 2y cubed, so remember y is a function of x, so think of it as 2 times blah 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 to the power of 3. So the derivative would be negative 6y squared. And don't forget the extra little factor, the chain rule portion, an extra factor of, that's right, y prime. So in essence, when you receive the derivative of y, you get an extra factor of y prime coming out. The derivative of 3x is just 3, and the derivative of 6 is 0. And then now we just have to do some algebra. We're going to isolate the y prime term. I'll get negative 2x minus 3 on the right-hand side, and I'll divide everything by um, negative 6y squared. I can change everything into positive, and there you go. Here is my derivative. Now, notice my derivative is also going to involve both x and y. Okay? All right, number two, find the slope of the line tangent to this graph. So... Here's some sort of ellipse. Um, if I were to take the derivative, because I need that to find the slope of a line that's tangent, 2x, about 8y. Don't forget now, extra little bit, y prime, 0. We can go ahead and solve for y prime. And now with this, to figure out the slope of the tangent, we can just plug it in. So the slope of the tangent by plugging it in would be negative 3 for x, 4 times 2. How about negative 3 over 8? There we go. The slope of the line tangent to this graph. Done. By the way, just as an extra little bit, what's the slope of the perpendicular line or the normal line? Yeah, I know I didn't ask for this, but hey, let's just do it anyways. Good review. That's right, negative reciprocal, so 8 over 3. Okay? All right, let's do number 3. Number 3 has a little tricky thing. So let's see if you can figure that out. <laughs> Derivative of x cubed? No problem. 3x squared. But what about this thing? Negative 2xy. What's up with that? And if you said, da, 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 a prime b plus b prime a, that's right, product of two things. So I'm going to keep that minus sign there, I'm going to make a bracket, and I'm going to use product rule. So a prime, that's a 2, times b, plus b prime, now what's the derivative of y? That's 1, but don't forget, there's an extra factor of y prime. So there's my b prime with an a, 2x. And then I'll look at the next term here, y cubed. Its derivative is 3y squared. Don't forget, y prime. And then finally, on the right-hand side, the derivative of 5x is 5. Nice. Now I'm going to distribute the negative, and then I'm going to collect all the terms with y prime on one side. Lovely algebra, 5 minus 3x squared plus 2y. And then I can solve for y prime by factoring out negative 2, or sorry, factoring out the y prime. And then dividing the remaining factor onto the right hand side. Look at this, look at this, look at this. You're like, this looks kind of messy. I know, but it is the correct answer for y prime. But you're not done because they want you to find it and then evaluate it at this point. So now I want you to plug it in. So let's find out y prime at 1, 2. You can plug this in. Plug it in. Plug it in. What do we get? 5 minus 3 plus 4. Negative 2 plus 12. So what's that? 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 over 10. How about 3 fifths? Nice. Now, just a little note before I finish this example. You know how I said 
evaluate the point. If I didn't have this instruction of finding dy dx, do you know after doing this first step here, I didn't have to solve for y prime? Do you know what I could have done? Yeah, I could have just plugged in 1 comma 2 right away, because I have three variables here, and eliminate two of them to leave us with one. But because I did say find dy dx, you had to go through that algebra first. But on an AP exam, if you're trying to save some time, if you just see it evaluating, don't go ahead and do extra algebra. Just plug in the number right away after doing implicit differentiation. Whew. Okay, number four. I'm going to let you try this, please. The only difference with this one is I want you to find y double prime. That's right. Take the derivative twice and then also give me the answer in terms of y. I don't want to see any x's, okay? Just in terms of y. So you go ahead and try this first, please. Then come back and check. The derivative of x squared is 2x. 2y is 0. <gasps> Did you catch what I forgot? I hope that wasn't you as well. The derivative of y squared is 2y, y prime. 2y, y prime equals negative 2x. So y prime equals to negative x over y. Nice or not nice because I'm asking you to find the second derivative so the derivative of y prime is y double prime and then the derivative of the right hand side will have to be the quotient rule I need to know low which is y d high which is negative one less high which is negative x d low which is y prime Draw a line and then below put the square of the low. Woo! But wait, it's supposed to be in terms of y prime. We got problems here. Ew, x, ew, y prime. Not good. So how can we simplify this? Well, we have a negative y. Those two negatives become a positive. I want to deal with the y prime first because the y prime is really what we just had over here which is negative x over y. And you're thinking, that looks not much better. You're right, but look what I can do now. If I were to find the common... Oh, actually, let me just do this, negative y. I'll combine this part together. That's negative x squared over y, all over y squared. And then if I ask you to do some more algebra here, finding the common denominator, the common denominator here would be y, so this becomes negative y squared minus x squared all over y squared. And then you may be thinking, hmm, 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 this doesn't look much better. And I'm saying, yes, it does, because if I factor out the negative, I get this. And you're like, why is that much better? Can't you see? Because you totally forgot what the question was. That x squared plus y squared equals to 3, and here we have x squared plus y squared. So look at that, look at that. We finally have here actually the answer of negative 3 over y over y squared. Now, if you don't want to write like that, you can just write this as negative 3 over y cubed. Right? y divided by y squared, y cubed. Wow. And now you have your answer in terms of y. Bravo. Okay. All right. One last one to try. Given that you have, ooh, cotangent. Oh, those trig derivatives. What is the derivative of cotangent? If you said negative, remember c's are always negative. Cosecant squared y. You are almost right. What did I forget? That's right. An extra y prime. This will equal to the derivative of x is 1 minus, of course, y prime. And then your goal is to solve for y prime. So I'll move the right-hand side negative y prime to the left side. And then I can factor out y prime, which is 1 minus cosecant squared y. And so y prime equals to 1 over 1 minus cosecant squared y. And 1 minus cosecant squared, I don't really remember those Pythagorean identities, but that's cotangent squared y and 1 over cotangent is really the same thing as tangent. So if I wanted to simplify, there you have it. That is the derivative. Okay? So 
another skill but you know what our next section we're going to start to apply this stuff so please work on this try the assignment work on it check your answers so you'll be confident and ready for the next lesson here okay bye for now